Right, well, here we are uh, with the legend, the Scottish legend, that is Sionne Tuipilotu. Sionne, mate, it's, um, it's, it's nice. We're, we're in Glasgow. You've come from the shores of Australia a few years ago now. This must make you think, what have I done? Look at it, absolutely pissing with rain, and we're sat in Weepery in the West End. It suits you as well. It does. How have you found Glasgow since you've been over? I know, like, I'm, I'm asking you, like, but you've been here for a while. Yeah. But how are you enjoying it? You, you like it over I do, mate, I do. It's kind of gone pretty fast. And I'll take this morning, for example, this is Wilson Hospitality, you know, we're in at the coffee shop before it even opens. Yeah. And these are some of the benefits um, that we do have in Glasgow. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it, mate. And it's kind of flown by, to be honest. I remember rocking up, this is when, you know, Nux and Nico were just leaving and yeah. I was rocking up then. But, that, but since then and till now, it kind of feels like it's gone by pretty far. And it's three whole seasons, you know? So it's been three years. We're coming up on three years now, so. God, I remember the day I first met you out at the, um, it was like, it was Annie's Land. Do you remember out on those pub benches? Was that Mad Monday? I think it was that Mad That was my Monday. first involvement, Mad your Monday. First, your first introduction <laughs> to Glasgow. It was good. But you, you obviously, like, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the Six Nations really quickly, but what, what brought you over here initially? It was, you, you've got, a, you, your Nana's Scottish, right? Yeah, my grand Scottish. Um, she's from Greenwich. And, Listen um, to me, Nana. <laughs> you not my Nana. Nana? Oh, I call her Gran, I think. Right, yeah, Gran. Um, but yeah, I, when I was in Japan, I, well, well, before I was uh, in Scotland, I was in Japan, I was kind of tossing up whether to stay in Japan, go back to Aussie or come over to um, Scotland. But since under 20 level, they've kind of always known about my Scottish heritage and I think, um, or Gregor had always said that they were interested in possibly getting me over to, you know, try and pursue a career playing for the test team. And I think after doing a couple of years in Japan and finding the love for rugby again in Japan, playing, playing over there, I kind of just, I was ready to play, like, uh, to try and pursue test rugby again, if you know what I mean. And yeah. so that was either going to be me doing my five years in Japan or go back home to Australia, try and make it for the Wallabies or, um, will come over here and to be honest if you ask me you know in my first month that I was in Japan I probably would have thought Scotland was the last option but by the time it got to the actual time of making the decision and I had talked to Gregor personally on FaceTime and everything like that for some reason it took about a couple of days and I changed my mind completely and I decided that I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and I just feel like I, when I was in Melbourne and in Australia anyways I, I grew up there my whole life so it's easy not easy in terms of the rugby but easy in terms of your life type of thing and I thought maybe it was the right time to go have a few, you know, like, man experiences, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and try and live by myself type thing. What is interesting, though, is you look at it, like, and everyone talks around, you know, there's the residency rule, which is five yeah. years, and, and people talk, oh, you know, why, why are they guys with the names? Two of Plotu playing for yeah. Scotland. And you mentioned that there was an opportunity to obviously stay in Japan and, and, and do the time there and try and get into that. There was, you played on 20s for, for the Wallabies, for yeah. Australia. But actually... When you come over here, you find, and people like Duhan and people, Duhan van der Merwe, Pierre Schumann, and you listen to the names, you listen to them speaking, you go, well, the boys aren't Scottish. You've yeah. got, obviously, the heritage is there, your, your, your nan's Scottish through and through, but you build that yeah. sort of, you know, bond with, with Scotland, don't you? You build, the, build it with the boys, and then you start to love it, and you actually, like, listen, I'm, my accent, yeah. I play for Scotland, and people can't believe it. I go down and speak at things, and they're like, hold on, I thought we were going to get a Scottish rugby player, and it's my accent, but... Yeah. And again, I'm the same. I had a Scottish grand, but I really found a love. I've been here 14 years, and yeah. my kids speak with Glaswegian yeah. accents. Poor girls. <laughs> but you find you find that bond, don't you? And you find that love, and you oh, you feel Scottish. It is weird when you when you speak about, like, and obviously all the comments from the outside about all the residency rule, and every country has it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like oh, I want to have it. Um, every country, has, like even even Australia has it in terms of all the Polynesian boys they've got yeah, playing for them. Yeah. So it's a normal thing in rugby, but. Like you say, when you get into these camps and stuff like that, and you, you feel you, you're into these camps for the whole build up and stuff like that, especially after season after season, you start to really embrace the culture and um, also like kind of take it upon yourself to try and contribute as well, you know, like because um, you see, I suppose, rugby in, in, in Scotland, we've kind of been on the brink of breaking through, and you really want to be, um, you know, one of those people to put your hand up to try and, you know, make the breakthrough type thing. So, yeah, definitely, I kind of. Oh, I love it, man. It's, it's so much fun. I love going into camp, especially when we're... Like, we're glad to go such a long season. Those Scotland camps really break everything up and get into a new environment. And, you know, after Belton and the Edinburgh boys before in the 1872, you get to join them in camp. It's a good vibe, It's man. an interesting dynamic, isn't it? Because you play against guys that you get so close with in camp. You yeah. spend, like, what, eight weeks in a Six Nations camp. But then 
it's always two, three weeks before the team's named for, for the Six Nations. Yeah. You are literally... Yeah. Hammer time. Yeah. lumps out of each other <laughs> in, a, in a cup match. So I talk about it, you know, your, your bond with Scotland, and obviously your fans' favourite now, you and Hugh Jones, Hugh Apollotto. <laughs> oh, I cringe every time I hear it said. But you, like, you look at the way that the fans have adopted you, there must be a connection there with the fans as well, because they love you. Glasgow fans love you. And the fact that you and Hugh, probably one of the most dangerous centre partnerships <clears throat> in Scottish rugby, along with maybe then, then you've got the Italians. Yeah. The Brex and Cello. They did really well the this Brex year. The Brex and Cello. <laughs> so that's a bit more sexy. Yeah, that is, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit more Italian. But you, you found, a, found a bond with the Glaswegian fans as well, haven't you? Yeah, massively. And I think um, well, as soon as I got here, I, I suppose I saw well, you were still here and I suppose all the all the people that the fans kind of bonded with were the guys that were being themselves. So I kind of had that to look at when I first got here. And um, yeah, I suppose I kind of just, every time that I was being interviewed or any time that I got to chat to a fan, I would try to be myself. And they seemed to like my personality, which can sometimes be a bit conflicting. No, but, but that's um, what they need, man. That's yeah. what they need. They need you after after games. It's like me moving into the, the punditry world, but they need you after games, not talking about rugby, talking about some bloke's NFL hat. Yeah. You're giving him a stick, right? Yeah, yeah, I was getting into him. <laughs> One of the commentators is there with a... Uh, with, uh... We had a Seahawks beanie on. And we have, we have history, the Niners and the Seahawks, and we just beat them on Thanksgiving a couple of weeks ago, so I got into them a bit. But that's what people want to see. And then you're obviously laying foundations in Scotland now. You're about to have a mini... Yeah. A, mini, a little nons. A little, a little nons. Yeah, yeah, a little, little nons. Um, that's, that must be exciting. That's just around the corner. Yeah, it's crazy, eh? And a little boy, right? A little boy, yeah. Oh, poor Laura. Um, exactly. And he's going to be a little Ouija, isn't he? It's That's crazy it. to say that my, my first son's going to be born in Glasgow. So, something to be proud of. And I know my grand's super happy that that's happening. So, um, yeah, it's a couple months away now. So, it's coming up. Six Nations, really brief look back on that. A bit disappointing. I think there's a lot of frustration there, isn't it? With the, with the squad that we had going into it and <clears> the high hopes that were there. And then yeah. there were a few close ones, obviously, France. Yeah, a big decision yeah. at the end, but people are talking about it. You know, we left it too late, and then obviously going over to Italy and, and not getting the win over there. You weren't involved in it. I know you were injured um, yeah. later on, and then then Ireland doing mm. so well, defending so well. What, what are your mm. thoughts on the Six Nations looking back at it? Just a brief one. <clears throat> yeah, just briefly, I suppose it is disappointing. That's the fact of it. Not to be too negative or anything, but but we kind of feel like um, I know the feeling in the group that the time's ticking a little bit in terms of you know our window to win something um, and. I just hope there's a little bit more of urgency heading into... I know we, we, we talked about all the right things this year and I did feel like we made massive growth from the World Cup, but, but the, the main fact of it all is that the clock is ticking in terms of you know this, this core group of players in terms to win something. We've got to accept that and, um, yeah, and hopefully try and make something happen. But it is really disappointing. And for, even for me, after the England game getting injured, watching the last two games at home, you know what it's like when you get injured Half of you, like, you're watching at home and it's like, bro, it's actually so, it was so disappointing like, watching that early game. But you also feel for the boys as well because you know how much work's gone into it. And, yeah. um, and then the Ireland game was actually, I was really proud watching the Ireland game, to be honest as well, because I know we haven't played that well against Ireland in the past couple of years, maybe in last year's Six Nations, but not, definitely not at the World Cup. And to see the boys stand up in a hostile environment, but I know they won't be happy with it, you know. We want to win at the end of the day, not just like, do well, you know what I mean? Or like yeah. stick it to them or whatever. It's like... It's not really enough, and you don't win tournaments by just doing well, I suppose. You're injured at the moment. What is it? What have you done your knee? Yeah, I've got a bung knee, the tongue and curse, the, the knees. <laughs> oh, that's gout. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got that too. Um, yeah, but my, my MCL, um, I've only got a couple of weeks left on my rehab, so it's, it's flown by quite fast. But I've had big nons, um, Sione Vailamu, and um, in rehab with me, so the, the two Tongan boys working on their knee health. So there's big nons, isn't there, and, and little nons at Glasgow, and you're all known uh, as the smaller one. I'm the, the I am the little nons. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, everyone's talking, talking about a Tongan MCL because Tongan MCLs are different. Like they're just suddenly, you like, usually that's what, a, a 10, 12 week, but you, you reckon you could be back sooner. I could be back sooner, yeah, hopefully, anyways. Um, it, it's been track, everything's tracking really well, but. Um, yeah, we've been me and Non's been drinking a lot of kava lately. We we <laughs> when my dad was over, my dad had us every second day in my living room just scooping up. And he, I don't know. Obviously, there's the the uh, 
whole myths about it being good for injuries and stuff like that, but it uh, seems to be working just, for me. Just for those that don't know what Carver is, because the first time I ever heard of it was from the Fijians, I yeah. thought it was like Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think that's good for you, but it's like a root, isn't it? It's just a, yeah, it's a ground down root, basically, and you kind of just sip it through water. Um, and then basically, my dad even brought over the Carver bowl from back home, spent half of his suitcase, <laughs> allowing it to be huge, a bowl, huge yeah, bowl. So he packed that in his bag and um, yeah, that was, that was good. So when I did get injured, he was there for, and we were, every night we were, we were having a carver session. So it was, it was good. It just makes my mouth go numb. It's numb. meant to have like an anesthetic feeling. Yeah, it, it does. Like chill out, and I think that's why it has the thing of being an anti-inflammatory is that it makes you feel mellow or whatever. But I'm not too sure if that has any correlation to <laughs> ligaments healing or whatever. So back into Glasgow, you've obviously been there. You've been injured throughout the Six Nations. So you've been doing your rehab and stuff back there. But let's look forward to the rest of the URC before we move on to the, the European cup stuff like mm. Glasgow in a pretty good place and Franco Smith's putting some good foundations there you said I can't believe it's been three seasons but <clears throat> you obviously were there when Danny Wilson was there and yeah. then Danny Wilson moved on but Franco Smith he's made a big big change he got rid of some of the dead wood yeah he, he did trim some of the dead wood some of the names that come to mind Brown Wilson Sam Johnson <laughs> But no. he's made a big difference, hasn't he? Frankly. No, he has. He's made a massive difference. And, um, you know, you were there for a season, Will. Well, it's like he, um, I think the way he built depth as well helped a lot yeah. just because, mate, this, these seasons, wait, like, they're so long that you play the same team every week. But when you get to the business end of the tournament uh, or, or, or the season, your boys are gassed. You know what I mean? You look at all the Leinster teams, all the successful teams. I, I, I don't think Leinster put out their best side yet. You know what I mean? And it's uh, yeah, it's, it's scary, heading into man. the um, pointy end of the season. So that's what I say. He he brought a lot of depth and also just passion to what he does. He's a very passionate coach, um, and I kind of like that in a coach. If you know what I mean, it, you you would as well, Will. Is that play the game from a very passionate point of view? So. Yeah, he's um, emotional. He's emotional, it? yeah, that's one more. He's, he's very yeah. emotional and explosive and he knows how to get to boys like Big Nons, for example. Like he knows how to get him in the mode to destroy, you know. So By winding made, him up and getting him angry. Yeah, but like some <laughs> so, but some coaches don't know how to do that with yeah. like they'll they'll scream at a like a, a, a poly boy and it might go the other way, where I feel like Franco knows how to harness that energy in different players, you know what I mean? Different personalities and bring it out. Um, so that's what I think he's, I think he's done an awesome job. And you're up there, I mean, at the time of filming this, you're up there third in the league. I think Leinster play Bulls this weekend and yeah. you guys have got Scarlet. So good opportunity. And, and with the running that we've got at Glasgow, I mean, you look at it and go, we should be making top four. So that's exciting. Like you, yeah. you, you're going to be pushing for a top four finish, which gives you a home, home quarter final in the league. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what you work for all year to try and, finish that top four, top two, so that you can um, you can play at home, you know what I mean? And enjoy your fans and stuff like that, enjoy the atmosphere. But I suppose one thing that we did learn from last year is that uh, the whole season's a kind of a grind to get a seed type of thing. And then once you get into the finals, that all means nothing anymore, you know yeah, what I mean? In yeah. terms of, and that's our one learning from last year. I think we got the fourth seed maybe or last year and we, we drew Munster at home. We ended yeah. up losing that game with, obviously, we had a red card and stuff like that. Um, but it just shows you that all that hard work that you do to the start of the season, it's just to get you there. Then after that, it means nothing. You know what I mean? You've got to turn up for all those, what is it, three games in a row to try and win something. Yeah, um, and on the flip side, then made it to the Challenge Cup final. and then Yeah, exactly. And we had Toulon in, yeah. in that final. And it is, it's, it's knockout footy. At yeah. The end of the day. And you get there, it's different. So part of the league then, we're, we're pretty confident we make top four. But in two weeks' time, we have a massive game. Last 16 of the Champions Cup. So good to be back in the Champions Cup this year. Where do you see that one going against Holtons? Yeah, it's a massive game. Um, I think we probably play, you know, from in comparison of a Prem team to URC team, we have really similar styles. So I think it's going to make for a pretty entertaining game. Um, and obviously, they've got a lot of players that have been playing really good footy lately. You know, Marcus Smith um, and stuff like that. Alex Dombran in the in the forward pack, so um, it just makes for an entertaining game. I've never played at the, at the Stoop. Um, I don't know what it's like, but from whatever, from what boys have told me, it's a good place to play, so I think it'll be an entertaining game. And last 16 of Europe, Champions Cup, being back in there, you want to play on the biggest stage possible, and that is, that's as big as it gets, right, in, in terms of domestic rugby. Massive, mate, and it's, it, European weekends just have a little bit of a different feel to them, you know, like, 
club games and stuff like oh the, in the urc are really good you're working towards a goal but the european especially when you get to knockouts it's a bit of a different feel and i think it's such a cool competition like all the south african teams yeah, now yeah. coming in and you get the mix of french rugby south african rugby and you know british rugby you know what i mean like it's it's cool man yeah and we're hoping that well push i think there's an there's opportunity if we win that against quinn there's a good chance we get a home home quarter again in, in european so in terms of domestic rugby, Glasgow this season could be pushing for, for pretty high honours. Yeah, it's it, well, we've definitely put up in ourselves in a position to do that. Um, now it's just about going and doing it. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it's like you work the same thing in Europe. You work all the round games to put yourself in a position and then you actually got to go and do it. So that's what I think will be our main focus is next week. Right. We're obviously doing this stuff with First Point USA, and I've, I've explained a few bits to you in terms of what they do. You love your American sport, don't you? You're a big NFL fan? Yeah, I love NFL, yeah. So who's your, who's your team? So I'm a Niners it's, fan. I'm a Niners, Niners fan. So we lost in the Super Bowl. That's not the 69ers, is it? Um. <laughs> I thought I got that wrong the other day when yeah. I went down. The to Buffalo do this stuff. 69ers or some shit. <laughs> and they were like, name that one. And I was like, oh, yeah, the 69ers. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, yeah. We, Why, I got, how, come, how come you're such a, a big NFL fan? Well, to be honest with you, um, like, I've always followed American sport, but I actually only got into it hugely and started following it massively when I moved to Glasgow is because uh, Jack Dempsey's a massive American sports fan. And he'll tell you himself, no one knows better, has better knowledge of NFL history than him. So it's, it's quite annoying. Like you'd be talking about something, he goes, yeah, but in 87, yeah. something like that. That's just like, <laughs> they were shut up, bro. Hey, but, um, Reece Samick going over there, what do you reckon about that? The Chiefs, they reckon it looks, the Chiefs it looks, be Mate, he's, from what, I, what I've been reading, he's getting 900 bags, it makes, it makes um, a practice squad. So who's really laughing? Hey, well, are you thinking about it? <laughs> Uh, my knees are gone. I got the tongue cursed. <laughs> yeah, I should have gone when I was twenty. But, but that, that would interest you, though, wouldn't it? Like, oh, I can be amazing. I can be even to just do the training. You know what I mean? Like they train so differently to for outcome. Like because they don't have to run around continuously for eighty minutes. You know what I mean? It's all short bursts. So it, it's they're such good athletes, mate. When I see that, it's we look at our rugby players. Me and you take our top off. <laughs> and mate, then don't, please don't make me do that. We put like Saquon in the middle of us. It just it embarrasses us, bro. But yeah, they are different games, you know? So I, I hope, I really hope Zamet makes it. It's a tough task ahead with all the athletes that you got to compete against. But, oh, it seems to be doing all right so far. What position would you be in the NFL? Because I'm not, I'm not that clued up on it. Oh, like usually like the offcuts usually go on the special teams <laughs> and they chase kicks. So maybe one of those guys. What about Sione Bailano? Where would he be? Oh, they'd find a spot for him. They'd find a spot for him. No, Terrifying, bro. Ball. He would, he, I reckon he'd go all right, wouldn't he? Terrifying. Yeah, but you've got to remember Sione over there, the American food. Everything could change. Yeah, but then could get a bit of weight on. Yeah, a, bit of weight on. a bit of weight. He'd be pretty handy. And... Um, let's let's talk about it just in terms of rugby then. Mm. Um, so, and the MLR is obviously getting bigger and bigger. The 2031 World Cup in America. Yeah, you've seen some big names going over there. Martin Nonu's still doing a shift over there. The likes Crazy. of Matt Gitto re-signing at, at whatever age he is. But they're yeah. making moves in the in rugby in America at the moment. Yeah. Is that something that interests you at all? Like, I definitely love to. I think what I've learned from moving over to Glasgow, playing a bit over in Japan, is that like rugby gives you so much life experience in terms of you get to live and travel. And um, I definitely like to use it in terms of you know getting over there and like living in America for a couple. I reckon that'd be such a good experience, you know. And yeah, like you say, even the legends of the game like Ma and Matt um, Gitto over there, it's it's cool, man. And every year it seems to get bigger and bigger. And like, I don't even know. I know my mate Billy Meeks has been over there. Yeah. Um, for years now, I think he's at Chicago now. Um, but yeah, every year it seems to be getting bigger and bigger. And if they can keep building like that towards the World Cup, and then the World Cup happens, like America do sport so good, you know what I mean? Like, it, you know, I can't see it not taken off. And that's that's an opportunity that a lot of kids that when we do trials and then first point place them in scholarships over in the US. The pathway for rugby is obviously they get over there and, and the fact that the ML, MLR is growing so quickly, yeah. they, they then have chances to get in there and find a way. So yeah. for kids trying to get over there and do a scholarship but also grow you know, in terms of a rugby player, what a great opportunity. And, and you have heard and known about some of the facilities over there, just next level at the college. Oh, man, it's, it's so funny. when we're, I've been on YouTube lately and they do like tours of like the college environment. Yeah. And then I'm going into Scotsum <laughs> and, I, and I'm looking around, I'm going, oh, but it's like, even the college experience in, in general, 
well, we don't have that in Australia. I'm not, that, I'm not shooting them. They have university sport over here, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like, and I just feel like when you, when you watch all the kids go there, they actually get to live their life between 18 and 22. You know what I mean? In terms of getting education, um, live that college lifestyle. Frat you know what I mean? Like, it's, it looks enjoyable. I don't know. Like, is it all of a sad? But it, it looks like a good time to me. Um, and I reckon it's just a, it's a sick experience. If that's something that you want to do, play professional rugby, there's a pathway over there. Um, to go play MLR, but you also you get an education, you know what I mean? It's, it's a win-win, and you get to go also go over there and enjoy the college lifestyle. So a young Sione Tuopilotu, right, 16 years old, <laughs> what would you be telling him now to work on to, to make it in professional rugby? For these kids that are coming along for these trials or someone that's over there at the moment maybe in a scholarship, yep. they've got everything at their feet. They've literally got every sort of facility they need. Yeah. They've got the nutrition, they've got you know, everything yeah. around it. What advice would you be giving them? <clears throat> Um, getting deep now. Yeah, you're getting real deep. Uh, <laughs> off, every, everyone's different in terms of what they always fall back on, but like, you'd probably be pretty similar to me, Wills, is that I, I thought, uh, you know, the deeper you get into your professional rugby, um, I always find, or the higher up you get into professional rugby, test rugby stuff, you're always, for me anyways, I'm always trying to find the kid in myself again, if you know what I mean, like the passion that you played with at under-14s or under-16s with... Um, when no one was watching, when your old man was watching, you know, yeah, you'd yeah. go on and go up, rock up and just belt kids for fun. And, and it was so fun and you were so passionate about playing for you. you to, I would just say to keep that passion, you know what I mean? Like yeah. from under 15s to under 16s, to under, just to keep enjoying the game in terms of it being a game, you know what I mean? And trying to win and in rugby, trying to hurt other people, you know what I mean? That's what I, I, I look at it as a game is that I always felt like after a game in reflection is when I haven't played well is when my passion hasn't been up. And all the skills and stuff like that are stuff you add on to it. But I think something that I always fall back on is like my passion and love for the game. And you'd be similar, Wills, is that we, I always felt like, you know, contact sport, that all the skill and stuff like that, that all gets evened out um, when you play if your energy and passion is on that at the right level. You know what I mean? So I would just say keep enjoying it um, every step of the way and don't leave your passion in under 14s and under 15s. Bring that all the way because it's something that translates at every level, I think. Yeah, and, and, and I saw that from you that, that as soon as you came in, the way you, that you'd approach the games. There's so many people take it differently and, and listen, some people, different horses, different courses yeah. and some guys in the change room will be really focused. Some will be having a laugh and it's getting that blend right. And yeah. What's been really interesting with you is You've grown as a leader at Glasgow. You're obviously in the leadership group with Scotland and I think vice-captained a few times and I think you've even captained. But it's funny, isn't it? You look at people like Finn Russell and yourself. It's mm. not your, the, the normal sort of leaders that you would look at in the past. This really serious guy that goes and hammers it down. And that's the way it's going. You need to try and yeah. have a good blend. You enjoy yourself and, and you've become a bit of a leader in that <coughs> Scotland and Glasgow squad as well. Yeah, I think I've just learned to be a bit more like myself. You know what I mean? Like I, I think when you get into a new environment, you try and do all the right things, but you want to lose yourself along the way. And I think one thing that Finn's really done well is that throughout his whole career, he's probably never deviated from being himself. And now he's gotten to the position where he's good enough at, well, obviously really good at rugby, he's but all also right. he's all right. He's all right. Um, but it can translate into people following him because of how he plays on game day type of thing. Um, so I think it's just, yeah, like if you're that type of personality, don't shy away from it and be yourself and stuff like that. But I also do feel like there's, a, there's times where you have to step up and lead in terms of you know, the other side of it, you know, I'm all for like going out after games that that's literally maybe my whole career. But there's also times Will says when you're a leader of a team and you're a skipper you get, on game day, I feel like you got to step up and lead and not just, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like fade away into letting other people do your job type thing. No, you've been good. Well, mate, listen, all the best for the rest of the season, URC, Champions Cup and then summer tour coming up, which should be pretty good. And you're actually over in America. I have heard the itinerary. It's looking quite juicy. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. You play the US, don't you? And you play Canada, Canada I'm pretty Canada sure. And Vancouver. So yeah. you'd be over there. It's pretty cool. On America tour. Mate, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, connection. <laughs>